hello class 9 in my last class i have said that uh, i'll continue in the next class from parts of respiration as we were going through the respiratory system so today i'll be starting from here now there are four major parts of respiration as you know first one is breathing breathing is very common phenomenon which we all know it's a physical process when we are taking inside the oxygen and we are giving out the co2 and that is why we are breathing oxygen in inside the lungs next is gaseous transport now the oxygen which we are taking inside what is happening to that oxygen it is absorbed by the blood in the lungs and is carried by the red blood cells as oxyhemoglobin throughout the body by means of arteries the carbon dioxide from the tissues is transported to the lungs by the blood by means of veins in two ways now these two ways we have to remember one as bicarbonates dissolved in plasma and partly in combination with the hemoglobin of rbcs as carbaminohemoglobin so one is by uh, one is as bicarbonates and the other is as carbaminohemoglobin okay number 3 tissue respiration the terminal blood vessels that is the capillaries deliver the oxygen to the body cells or tissues where oxygen diffuses through their thin walls and in a similar way the capillaries pick up the carbon dioxide released by them so tissue respiration means where the capillaries is delivering the oxygen to the tissues where this oxygen is diffusing through the thin walls of the capillaries and the capillaries in the similar way is picking up the co2 released by the tissues after the respiration process clear next is cellular respiration the complex chemical changes which occur inside the cell to release energy from glucose so cellular respiration is a bit complicated part because you know when we are getting inside and more inside interior then we are getting inside the cellular part and there the most complex chemical changes are occurring now one diagram is there students which you have to practice very properly let me show you the diagram this is the diagram this diagram is very very important for your exam right now this part where does respiration occur in a cell this part is also very important because we have to know a bit elaborately about the cellular respiration as i'm i i'm uh, i have just told you that cellular respiration is a more complicated part of the respiration so in two different places two different phases occur one is glycolysis another is krebs cycle now glycolysis occurs in cytoplasm outside the mitochondria what happens at that time it breaks down it's an organic acid pyruvic acid which further breaks down into ethanol in plants and lactic acid in animals it is an anaerobic part and very little energy is released next half is the krebs cycle now where does it occur it occurs inside the mitochondria it needs oxygen step by step breakdown of pyruvic acid or lactic acid to produce atp and co2 h plus ions released in the cycle are removed through the oxygen supplied by forming water and much energy is produced so now you know what for our body needs oxygen now you have understood why do we need so much of oxygen yes to remove the h plus ions understood so these two phases of cellular respiration is very very important i hope it is clear okay now what are the respiratory organs we all know nose and lungs but in between there are also various parts which we must know nose pharynx larynx trachea bronchi and the lungs 
Now this nose has got the external part. We call it as two nostrils separated by a cartilaginous septum. The hairs present in the nostrils prevent large particles from entering the system. The two nostrils open into a pair of nasal chambers and the inner lining of these nasal chambers has got three functions. What are those functions? It warms the air as it passes over. It adds moisture to the air. Its mucus secretion entraps harmful particles. So always breathe through the nose and not through the mouth because nose has got certain subs, certain properties which can entrap the harmful particles. An additional function is to smell. Now next part is the pharynx. The nasal chambers open at the back into a wide cavity, the pharynx, situated at the back of the mouth. It is a common passage for air and food. It leads into an air tube, we call it as trachea, and a food tube, we call it as esophagus. I hope students, you know it. Located dorsally behind the trachea. When not in use, the food tube is partially collapsed as it has soft walls. The entrance to the trachea is guarded by a flap called epiglottis. This is a very important part which you must know that where is it located, epiglottis location and what is its function? It closes at the time of swallowing food. Understood? Otherwise, the food will go into the nasal chamber. Incomplete closure of epiglottis during swallowing causes cough. Next part is larynx. Larynx is also known as the voice box or the Adam's apple. It is a cartilaginous structure located at the start of the windpipe. Now this diagram is also very important. Figure here we can see the air passage in the nose and throat. Go through the labelings because this is a bit complicated diagram so it will not come for your drawing but for your labelling it may come. You can feel it with your fingers in the front part of your neck, the Adam's apple. When you swallow something, this part rises and falls. It contains two ligamentous folds called vocal cords. I hope you know what are vocal cords. Is the, these vocal cords are important and is essential for the voice. Air expelled forcibly through the vocal cords vibrates them producing sound. Clear? Next part is the trachea. The trachea or the windpipe emerges from the larynx down below in the neck where it is partly covered by the thyroid gland. Its walls are strengthened by C-shaped rings of cartilage, the incomplete parts of the rings being on the backside. The rings, what are the functions of the rings? The C-shaped rings. These rings provide flexibility and keep the trachea distended permanently. Distended means in a tight proper position. It gives a mechanical framework. Clear? Bronchi close to the lungs. The trachea divides into two tubes called the bronchi. On entering the lungs, each bronchus divides into fine secondary bronchi and which further divide to form finer tertiary, tertiary bronchi. The cartilaginous rings as those present on the trachea are also present here. Bronchioles are the subsequent still finer tubes of tertiary bronchi which acquire a diameter of about 1 mm and are without cartilaginous rings. By repeated branching, the bronchioles ultimately end in a cluster of tiny air chambers called the air sacs or alveoli. So students, you have to remember step by step. Trachea, then bronchi, then secondary bronchi, then tertiary bronchi, then bronchioles. And at last, the alveoli or the air sacs, which are very, very tiny air chambers formed into clusters. Here we can see the diagram of alveoli and in the broader way, we can see it in the whole diagram within the lungs. And we can see here bronchial entering into the alveolar ducts and in the alveolus and how the capillary is in number E. How the capillaries are surrounding the wall of each alveolus where it allows the gaseous diffusion. I hope.